Hello everyone, this is Mega Hunter, and today we saw a little difference. As you can see on the screen, this isn't Yomi. This is a totally different kind of game I want to talk about today. It's Exceed, and specifically I want to go over a certain favorite character of mine, Carl Clover, from Season 5, the Blaze Blue season. Um, disclaimer. I am new to Exceed. I basically start picked it up like I think maybe a little over a month ago, and uh, really got into playing with a lot with a group of my friends. And it's just a really really enjoyable game. One character I really gravitated to um, that I really wanted to make work was Carl Clover, just because I enjoyed the puppet character archetype, and I think Carl felt like the funnest and the best implemented puppet character. Um, as far as I know, the puppet characters in Exceed, they got Miska in Season 1, who has her um, dog, which is okay. And then Season 2 has Sydney. Sydney and Serena are fun, but I did not enjoy them as much because Serena, you can't actually, yeah, can't actually move the character. You can't actually move the puppets. Um, season 3 and 4, uh, well, Season 4 has Shovel and Shield Knight. Admittedly, I haven't tried them yet, but... Um, I took a look at the cards and I wasn't really a fan. But season 5? Yeah, Carl I think really hit the right spot. It's a really fun puppet character that applies pressure to the opponents in a really unique way. So I just want to go over Carl's um, overall strengths and weak. I guess Carl's overall kit and exceed. Um, his place in it, how he plays. And even I want to go over kind of briefly about the normals as well because Carl values normals, I think, a lot compared to maybe the average character. Um, but yeah, I'll go into that more later. But yeah, first of all, um, to those unfamiliar with Exceed, what, what is Exceed? Exceed is a fighting card game where both players uh, jostle for positioning and ranges in this board, this like nine space board. Each player has 30 life, reduced uh, life to zero, and you win. The opponent's life to zero and you win. Um, pretty straightforward. Players can do a lot of actions in the turn though. Um, and yeah, uh, Exceed is, uh, it's pretty, it's, if you're familiar with Battlecon, it's kind of similar to Battlecon in terms of um, the stats, like range, power, guard, armor, um, speed. But um, it plays differently because, you know, each player, each, each player has a deck, yeah. And the deck composed of um, seven, each character has their own, like, seven, well, with a few exceptions, but each character has their own specials and ultras, as well as shared normals. So there's, uh, each character has a set of eight normals that they share. So these are the, these are the only cards that are unique to the character. They get two copies of each. Yeah. So I kind of want to go over Carl's kit and uh, how I play him, because I I played a lot of characters in Exceed. Well, in the in the in the brief month I've been playing this game, <laughs> I played quite a few characters, and Carl was the one that you know really stood out to me. And I played a lot of games with Carl. At first, I struggled with making him work, but now I think I can. I'm pretty decently comfortable in piloting him. So, um, yeah, let's let's begin. First, uh, we got to talk about um, just season Blaze Blue season five uniquely. I want to go over his each character not only has a UA but also overdrive where they flip for a limited time, and their passive changes, um, and they get access to. They become like a stronger, like in Exceed, um, a main mechanic is you pay gauge in order to flip your character and you get a permanent boost. But for Blaze Blue, they get an overdrive mechanic where it only lasts for a limited time. So yeah, what what is uh, Carl's UA is kind of weird because. Um, you kind of have to look at it. His UA is like split into two cards. So his UA on his character card it just says begin with Nirvana in your space. As actually you may move Nirvana one space, and that's it. Um, I'll be honest, this is a really bad UA. It's not great because um, characters will be in a turn. Generally, players will be boosting. Uh, prepping, changing cards, doing even and striking as their action, and Carl only gets to move his sister, his Nirvana, 
his puppet that he controls only gets to move for one space. It's just uh, it's kind of underwhelming as a UA, but here the second part of the UA is basically attached to his character. Um, the main the main draw of his puppet Nirvana is that if the opponent is on Nirvana space or between Carl and Nirvana, like if he gets a infamous sandwich going, like say sisters here, he's here, and then the opponent is somewhere between them or on top of her. Then his specials and ultra gets plus one power and plus one speed. This is obviously extremely good because um, you can basically break the speed curve and just break uh, and basically break guard that um, people won't expect. You have a lot of power in it with this UA when you set up correctly. But of course, the main downsides of Carl is that Nirvana is slow, like outside of his UA, which only moves Nirvana one space. Um, Nirvana's movement options are still slow, and they're all attached to boosts or certain attacks. Um, additionally, the opponent attack has it before, in Nirvana's in your space, or in your range, you may flip her. If you do, you cannot hit, but add this to your gauge after the strike. And the reason this is so bad is because um, your opponent can, if the opponent uh, is faster than Nirvana and sees Nirvana trying to play one of her specials, then, Nirvana, then the opponent can just simply cancel it with their before effect if they're faster, faster speed. So obviously there's a big problem. It makes Nirvana tough to use when playing slow attacks because the opponent, if they're, if they're faster and within range, they can just shut her off and prevent her from attacking. This is disabled. Disabled Nirvana, cannot move, cannot attack, but she flips over the next strike and then the next strike. So it's only disabled for a limited time. So yeah, his UA is of course, obviously the, the the power and speed bonus is great, but how do you? But you know, it's tough to. This Nirvana still has a lot of downsides, being slow and being able to be flipped. But uh, that's where his exceed comes in. When he pays three gauge to overdrive, um, he gets to flip and he gains this UA. Nirvana cannot be flipped during strikes. As actually being moved Nirvana one space then strike. And overdrive, at the, which happens at the start of your turn, you may move Nirvana one space. Suddenly, this gives Carl way more action compression. Um, Nirvana is moving for free at the start of his turn. Nirvana can move one space for an action and strike. And the best of all, Nirvana can actually threaten all her specials. Like her slowest special, um, Con Anima at two speed, usually is tough to land when. Carl is not exceeded because the opponent can just flip Nirvana and render her unable to attack. But when Carl is exceeded, Nirvana cannot be flipped for any reason. So the opponent basically cannot stop, cannot hit Nirvana, cannot stop her from firing off an attack. The opponent has to attack Carl and stun him, basically, to stop Nirvana's attack from going off. So this is obviously a very powerful overdrive. But unfortunately, it only lasts, um, it only lasts a uh, two full turns because it'll last a turn after you exceeded a turn after that and then by the third turn um he flips back to regular carl after moving around one space so he has to really make the most out of his exceed when he can so you gotta time it you gotta time it right so um yeah so that's uh carl's ua and his ua is attached to two to two, 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 two cards so we got to look at his kit to see how how they really function? How he really functions? Um, first of all, he starts off. He and his sister start off here, on this part of the board, together. And basically, Carl has to take advantage of his movements and his movement on his specials, and some of his boosts to move Nirvana and him around, and make sure that he lands the sandwich to get the plus one power and plus one speed bonus. So let's look from his specials first. Um, Carl's specials, you notice that four of his specials calculate from Nirvana. This is pretty, this is pretty significant, this is pretty uh, a trademark of puppet characters where um, certain attacks, they don't come from Carl himself, they come from the puppet that he controls. So that's why Nirvana's positioning is important. Um, and then one, one special comes from Carl. That's the only special that comes from Carl. So let's look at uh, Carl's special. Um, actually, let, yeah, let's start with, yeah, let's start with uh, yeah, Carl special, and then we go over Nirvana specials. So first special, Cantabile. You can see that is way above curve, speed six, crazy range. On hit, pull one or two, 
If you initiate a strike, draw one and gain advantage. After move to front up to one space. This is a very, very key tool for Carl because um, it can stun out so many fast attacks because it is way above curve. Uh, well, not way above curve. I would say, yeah, it's one above curve because at range three, it's going to be faster than pretty much any, almost everything. And then when he, it's only one power, unfortunately. But the main, the main power from this card lies in the pull. Basically, you can pull the opponents. So say Nirvana's here and Carl is here. And the opponent is here, Nirvana can use Cantabal, pull the opponent over, and suddenly the opponent's in a sandwich. And Carl gets advantage, which is the best part. Carl can immediately take his turn and strike again, or do something else. And the after effect is great too. Move Nirvana up to one space. Um, Nirvana has limited movements, obviously. So any kind of movements on specials um, is much appreciated. So Nirvana can basically move to one space within the opponents and threaten most of her specials, which is great. And the boost on this card is also very key. Move around to your space, take an action. Sometimes Carl would love to use Cantabile as an attack whenever he can, but um, sometimes you really need the boost because if the opponent is savvy and just far away from Nirvana, just like sitting here, like Nirvana's all the way here, and Carl's like next to the opponent, Carl may consider um, using the boost to teleport Nirvana on top of him. And then, as an action, perhaps move her onto the opponent's base. He really needs that boost because Nirvana can only move like one or two spaces at a time, and this is the only only teleport that Nirvana has that um, can deal with opponents that just run away from her. So, overall, this is an extremely key card. Um, I see Taraka do power budget videos where he basically like um, power budgets are ranking the strength of the character's kit. I'm not really going to do that, but I will say. The Cantabal is extremely important for Carl, and he has to use it wisely. Um, let's go to Nirvana specials. Uh, let's see here. Combrio. Let's go from the let's go from the slowest to the fastest Nirvana special. Yeah, let's go by speed. The first one, Volante. This is an extremely useful special for Carl. Um, it is the only. If you notice, all Nirvana specials have pretty short range. Confoco has like I think range four, which is the long, which is the second longest. But Volante is Carl's only fireball special. Fireballs are really important to have in Exceed because uh, normals only go up to range four. Dive is essentially range four, yeah. So without fireballs, it can be tough to hurt the opponent that's standing on the um, other end of the map, other end of the arena, and you have to basically reposition yourself to do anything to them. But Volante is a very good card for Carl, because this is only fireball and it does a lot of things. So first of all, um, it's got a good, it's got a decent stat line. Um, it's really slow. It's like a counter fireball, um, but it's got yeah, it's got a it's got a decent stat line, good range, solid range, um, one armor as well, which is appreciated. And uh, the main use of this card is to allow Carl. Not only to get damage in from from Nirvana, but also to reposition. So obviously, this card is best used when Nirvana is far away from the opponent, and the opponent cannot hit Nirvana, cannot outspeed and hit Nirvana to turn her off. But the main the main power of this card lies in this hit effect and the after effect. The hit effect, if the opponent's at range one from Carl, it gets plus two power and gain advantage. So this becomes a 5 damage fireball if Carl is standing next to the opponent and it hits. Which is really good. It's uh, Most fireballs do about 4 damage. Um, so not only is it um, above... Yeah, not only is it above average power, but Carl also gets advantage and he takes his turn again. You can see that Carl has like 2, 3 specials that trigger advantage. Which is what he really needs to basically threaten his sandwich combos where he has the opponent trapped, and he can do a flurry of attacks. So this is part of his combo. So, of course, the best, and then the after effect, advance one or two, is what Carl desperately needs to basically set up the sandwich afterwards. So if Carl, if the opponent is in front of Carl like this, um, the after advance can put up Carl on the other side of the opponent and set up the sandwich and get plus one power, plus one speed to special and ultras. Um, really good. 
Unfortunately, the only thing is missing is that Nirvana doesn't actually move herself, but it's still a fantastic card. Um, it's still good for free damage, and and advantage is always great. Denying opponent turns is very strong in Exceed. Um, yeah, and if you get the sandwich set up, this fireball can do like six damage. It's crazy. Um, and let's see the boost on Volante. Not only is Volante an amazing attack, the boost is one of Carl's best, in my opinion, for a special because um, he gains plus one speed, which is oftentimes the only thing you need to um, be to outspeed your opponents. And then the after effect advance or retreat one. This after effects just allows Carl to do a lot of really tricky things with his normals and specials. So basically, he can like pull the opponents or jostle for positioning. He can like play a dive and then after advance one to create a sandwich. He can do so many tricky things. He, he can play assault, gain advantage, and then advance, and he gets a sandwich. This after movement is so so important. It just allows Carl to even avoid attacks as well. He can hit, he can strike and then retreat one to avoid a uh, sweep or something. This after movement is just so versatile for Carl. And um, yeah, it's such a great boost. It does everything for him. Okay. Next we move to like the, I would consider this the the black sheep of Carl specials, Con Anima. Um, we can see that it's a short range, uh, okay power. It's very slow. It's, a, it's the same uh, speed as the sweep. And only three guard. Okay, that, that three guard is very, very bad. It just, um, it's tough to fire this off without Carl being stunned sometimes. Um, it does beat Grasp and Cross because they don't do enough damage to stun Carl, but um, otherwise it's hard to use this attack. Not to mention if the opponent is faster than Con Anima, um, they can just turn the sister off and prevent her from actually using the attack. However, this card is designed so that, that so that um, even if Nirvana whiffs, it's okay. So you can see that this is Carl's only ignore guard special. All the other specials, they're very threatening. Um, the opponents may want to block them. So Con Anima is, well, well, actually block does have armor. So this doesn't even stop block that well. But um, it's still a great card to punish opponents that try to play focus or sweep. Or something, something slow to counter, to counter hit, to make trades with Carl. So this card is very good in that respect. Um, it's the only ignore guard card that he has in this kit, so he has to use it wisely. On hits, the opponent must discard two cards at random. So it's like a, it's like a sweep with more um, discard, but uh, less range, less guard. <laughs> it's not that great, to be honest even though it can be a good punish. The opponent does something slow. But the after effect is what makes this card, you know, kind of salvageable actually, because if even if the opponent turns turns Nirvana off, she gets shut down. Um, attacks that can't call the Nirvana gonna hit, sure. But after effects and stuff still go off if, you know, Carl's not stunned, obviously. So he gets, Carl gets to draw two um, if the attack whiffs. Or, you know, Nirvana turns off. So, this card does have a purpose. It can be a good... I find this a decent uh, attack to use to, if you predict your opponent's movement, will run into Nirvana and get hits. Or, if you're not expecting this attack to hit at all, then just uh, you can just play it and just get the, the free card draw and hopefully burn the opponent, and maybe burn the opponent of a strike option. A strike option. So, this is like a, it's like a good throwaway card, I guess, for a strike. It's alright. Um, this card is a lot better, I will say, when Carl's exceeded, because then the opponent cannot flip Nirvana, and this guard break becomes a lot more threatening. And thus, respecting this card can open up these options. And the boost, unfortunately, not only is it, not only is Konanima kind of a mediocre attack, but um, the boost itself is not very good. Um, it causes the is the now effect to strike. And gives it gives Nirvana before move one uh, space, which uh, in a pinch you may really you may really need this. If Nirvana is just it's just barely out of range, and you need her you need her to be to get into range to hit. This can be okay, but 
it costing one force I think is not not great because it burns a lot of cards it burns burns this boost burns a force and it burns a card for we had to strike right not to mention Nirvana's best specials are four specials so that burns even more cards Carl does not have one weakness of Carl that didn't mention it, that he has not very good card draw so he kind of this this boost is a bit too uh, resource hungry in my opinion for such an underwhelming effect but overall this is Carl's weakest card in his kit but it still has a place on Foco now we went from one of his worst specials to one of his best arguably the best this is the, actually no this is Carl's best payout special because if you see the stat line um, 1 to 2 6 power 4 speed so it's like it's not um I, I, it's below curve but the before effects but if you see the before effects you can spend one force to move around the one two spaces you can see that this actually is a it's on it becomes on curve attack when you spend force because nirvana can hit from four range away or four speed kind of good dive and not to mention and don't forget when carl has the sandwich he gets plus one power plus one speed so this becomes seven power five speed this is very relevant because seven power is enough to break most players guard um the standard high guard is six and you know sweep has six guard so having an attack with seven power that's uh that's really good but that's only if you get a sandwich so con foco is like you can use this to really surprise the opponents by nirvana attacking from range the before advance and then hit for six or seven and not only that not only does this provide a good source of movement for Nirvana, because Nirvana's movement is terrible. It's one of the few cards that make her move like two spaces. That's big. Not to bet, but the best part, but a better part is on hit, close two, and gain advantage. So it's like it's unusual to see a card that gains advantage and does so much damage on hit. Um, it can really, you can really. This is part. This card is like very crucial when Carl has the sandwich set up, and he can try in a lot of mix-ups and deadly attacks and uh, a lot of power from this card um, he may need a speed boost to make sure that the opponent doesn't outspeed this um, having a sweep boost onto it for plus two speed with a sandwich this becomes a seven speed confoco which is insane and will beat out almost everything the opponent can do um, yeah so this card is very important for Carl to get for advantage, for damage, and for his combos. And the boost is, is attached to um, the base. It's okay. Um, it's free movements. Advance one or two. Advance five opponents strike. This can uh, this can be used as a good setup for obviously when Nirvana is close by. You can use you can use this boost to advance past the opponent and then strike with the sandwich. Gets the plus one power plus one speed before the opponent can react because. The opponent likes to always get out the sandwich by responding on their turn just by moving away. So this boost is good for immediately taking advantage of his plus one power plus one speed. Unfortunately, it's attached to Confoco, which is one of his best specials. So honestly, you would not be using this boost very much. You mostly want to use this for the attack, which is insane. It's an insane attack. And finally, we have the last special, Conbrio. Umbrio, it's a very, it's a grasp. It's a grasp on Nirvana, and this is obviously this is basically Nirvana's uh, one of Nirvana's uh, safest uh, specials to use because it's not going to be outsped really, especially if you initiate. It's not really going to be outsped by anything realistically, um, and the opponent cannot knock Nirvana, cannot be fast enough to disable Nirvana when she plays Umbrio. So, yeah, four special. 3 power, 7 speed, and on hit, push 2 away from Nirvana. I find this hit effect can be um, can be good or bad. Um, sometimes it is, you, you, would, you wish they... It's a mandatory push. Sometimes, unfortunately, if you play Combrio, you have to accept the fact that you push the opponent away 2 spaces, and then Nirvana cannot hit with Conanima, Conbrio. Um, she had to spend force with to move forward with Confoco. The push she may not like. 
but a push is good for um it's good for zoning the opponent away when he like if you have uh carl here and nirvana here and the opponent is like a brawler who wants to move forward and attack carl play in the, if he wants to play assault or something then nirvana can interrupt with combrio push the opponent two spaces away i'm stunned and you create more of a distance so combrio can be a very good card for pushing brawlers away that want to get close and it's a good gate closer because it's seven speed and it's eight speed with the sandwich when carl gets the sandwich of combrio there's not much the opponent can do without moving out of the way of nirvana on their turn they sit next to nirvana they risk just dying to a four power combrio that's eight speed it's insane and it's a great game closer uh yeah carl needs this in this kit for sure the boost is attached to Heresis, you may flip Nirvana and move from one space, take another action. Mm, this boost is okay. Sometimes you do need Nirvana to the taken this I think this boost basically is a strictly better boost than this. Because um you could take any action you want, it's not a mandatory strike. Um and it's free. It doesn't cost force. You basically mean Nirvana one for free and then take another action. You can prep or get more cards or strike even when you're in Nirvana's a good position. You can do a lot of things with this card. And then one space, then Nirvana, you can move her, is huge. So I think it's a good boost. But again, it's a case where the attack is so valuable, you might not want to play this boost unless you have to. That's the case for Carl though. Where your opponent... How Carl's kit works, his specials, is like he cannot... All his specials are like... A, with exception of this one, all his specials are movement related. Either he moves or Nirvana moves. And you know, he wants to create that sandwich, he wants to jostle for positioning. Um if Nirvana is not close to the opponent, she cannot threaten these like good specials. Um so yeah, so Carl has might have to sacrifice a special or two to get Nirvana to good positioning to take advantage of it. Okay, finally, um, we can look at Carl's Ultras and his Astral. So Carl's Ultras, Carl is sort of lacking in the boost department, arguably. A um, lot of characters have really powerful boosts. Carl only has like this one for stats and the uh, after. After effect is really good. But um, the boost that the stat boost that he's lacking are found on his Ultras. But the ultras, Carl's ultras themselves are amazing, on their own right. Like you can use them for the boost or the actual ultra, and you'll see good results with them, generally. But let's go over his two gauge ultra. Later bis cantata, later bilis cantata. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's a pretty for two gauge ultra. It's not, it's not a super great stat line. It's a lot of safety, which is great. It basically has the same armor guard as the focus. Um, only loses hard to spike, obviously. Um, don't get hit by spike when you play this. Um, power is mediocre. Range is okay. Yeah, it's generally a, just a slow counter hit ultra with two armor, which is good. But I mean, you play this. You play this mainly for the hit and after effects, not for the damage. So you only do three damage, but the hit push the opponent one. The hit, the push is generally great to this is a card that you want to play to make them fear nirvana or make that make nirvana be on top of the opponents because if the opponent is say here and nirvana is far away this is the perfect card to play to close the gap that nirvana really really is bad at closing normally you push the opponent one and you may flip nirvana move up to three spaces you can be nirvana one two three all the way next to the opponent and you can set up a really great positioning for you. This card is really necessary for Carl's kit and ultra, just as something to threaten and for the opponents, because on hits, it just gives Carl so much free positioning for Nirvana. Nirvana re really lacks movements. I can't emphasize enough, Nirvana is not a, ver it's not a mobile puppet, true to, yeah, true to the character. So without the tel teleport and cantabile, if the opponent is really far away, you might have to try to find and hit Katata. You might try to find a hit with this so that Nirvana can move all the way here next to the opponent. He needs his ultra. That's a very good part of his kit. It only costs two gauge. So, yeah, when you have a good chance, you can fire it off. 
for a great positioning. With a boost. Oh my god, what a boost. The boost is amazing. Um, is it now strike boost, like preemptive strike? That kind of style boost. But on hits, it is in Nirvana space, or so between you and Nirvana, aka you have the sandwich, plus tree power. Note that this does not just apply to specials ultras, it applies to all attacks. With this boost, you can smash guard. You can just completely obliterate the opponent. And if the opponent plays block, you can be very greedy. You can play spike for the extra power or Konanima for a nine damage Konanima. Plus the card discard. I've used this boost before to fire off a nine damage Volante on the because I got five power, plus one from the sandwich, plus three from the boost. So that's a nine damage fireball. This card is insane. This boost is insane. It's a huge power spike that the opponent may not expect and swings the game in your favor, just very suddenly. Important to note, when you have the sandwich set up, Combrio becomes a seven damage grasp, which becomes a grasp that not only beats well, it's 8 speed, 7 damage. So not only does it beat practically everything, it stuns practically everything. Because it breaks the 6 guard threshold. Um, it's, this boost is actually insane. Carl really needs this boost for big spikes in power when he's properly set up. One thing to note, a uh, niche case, is that you can actually play this boost. And since it's a hit effect, this is before you calculate damage. Um, you can, for example, Opponents here and not in the sandwich, you can play this boost, play cancel bow, pull them over you, and you get the plus three power. Because it's on hit effects, right? So you can choose the order of hit effects and you can get the plus three power after you pull it in the sandwich. But it's kinda that's kinda niche, because you telegraph to the opponent, hey, I'm gonna play cancer bile. So generally he wants to take advantage when the sandwich is already set up. Yeah, Confoco, yeah, that becomes Confoco does a casual ten damage. Casual ten damage and uh Gain's advantage, yeah, you can see why this boost is insane. So, in my opinion, for this this ultra, great ultra, even better boost. But you'll, Carl will find uses for both, for sure. Second ultra, Rhapsody of Memories, is Tree Gauge Ultra. Um, you can see that it's, stat line is not great for a Tree Gauge Ultra. 0 to 1 range, 5 power, 4 speed. So below curve, five guard. Um, the amount of guard is not, yeah, it's not great. But the main use of this ultra is notice that it calculates range from Nirvana, and most importantly, Nirvana cannot be flipped. This is really big. It's a really big uh, way to threaten um, the opponents when Nirvana, when you have tree gauge and Nirvana sitting next to them. They think that you know if the opponent refuses to move into you and wants to just turn off Nirvana. Um, this card just is a big no stop sign. And you know, Cantata, it's interesting. They like, re this, these two like reinforce each other in terms of positioning. Cantata is when you play next to Carl and then you can move Nirvana here. Rhapsody of Memories is like the opponent standing next to Nirvana just expecting her. She plays this and then Carl can go, can tread in close range. It's the after. The after effect gives Carl a lot of free positioning on hits. Decent damage, and of course Nirvana can be flipped. So often times, sometimes this ultra can just be unstoppable for the opponent, depending on what they have. Um, and they, you know, even if the opponent is, and of course for the sandwich, you get more stats, you get six power, five speed, pretty good. And you know, with the, it, even if the opponent's next to Carl, um, the five guard can stop the opponent from stunning you, possibly. And on hit, it's draw two. So not only is it a great way to reposition, it refills your hand, which Carl desperately needs because Carl is lacking card draw. He does not have any card draw whatsoever except for Cantabile, Con Anima, Whiffing, Rhapsody of Memories, yeah. He doesn't have any card draw in his boost or anything. So Carl is hungry for cards, hungry for options when he sets up a sandwich, so this is a good way to refuel your hand and get damage in. Um, it's a great ultra. Um, I find the use of this ultra really good after you set up the sandwich because after 
After Carl exceeds and hits the opponent a few times, he often has enough gauge to play Rhapsody of Memories when he returns back to normal Carl. Sometimes the opponent will want to take advantage of Nirvana not being invincible and exceed and try to flip her. You can use Rhapsody of Memories to punish. It's a really good ultra. And worth the cost to refill your hand and for the damage. And the boost is attached to is great as well. I would say it's not as good as duets. Duets, but I guess this boost is more versatile actually. This boost is more versatile than duets. Duet is specifically super high payoff when you put when you have the sandwich. But this boost is just a general overall great boost. One force for plus one power, plus one speed before moving around to one space. It's great. Um, you you may need this um, when Nirvana's out of position, and you need her to have the before effect to hit confirm her specials. Uh, plus one power, plus one speed. Um, it's just good for just good for anything really. So you, to break speed curve, plus one power to break uh, certain guard thresholds. It's an amazing boost all around. Just amazing boost. And any more any Nirvana movement is welcome. Um. Yeah, this is essentially a better version of fine tuning. Obviously, even though fine tuning is an outstrike effect, generally I would like I just like to set up with virtuoso, way more. And finally, um, what else? Carl's astral. Yes. Um. Carl's astral. Yeah. So if you don't know how astral works in Exceed, is when you take a panel reshuffle action, you reshuffle your deck, and you get the astral on top of your deck, and put it in your hand. So Astral, obviously all they all have burst, which is a great boost. Just draw two and take another action. But if you want to play it for the ultra, it's not bad as well. It's a, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good astral, all things considered. Um stun immunity, cochlear rage on Nirvana. Nirvana cannot be flipped. Afterwards seal Nirvana. It does uh, ten damage. Yeah. You can use this to cl close out games. When you have enough gauge, just use this to blow the opponent up if they're standing next to Nirvana. And they cannot stun you, and they cannot flip her. It's a crazy good game ender. Of course, the opponent will have to force the play around it by not standing next to her. Um, so yeah, you can give you can give this hit confirm as well, possibly if you have before movement effects, or you use your boost to move Dravana next to the opponent and then play Deus Ex Machina for ten damage. Um, just don't with this. Do not whiff this, because if you seal Nirvana, you're basically playing a super game character. <laughs> so yeah, use this. It's basically a all or nothing astral, very flavorful. Um, use this when you can basically guarantee the opponent will die to it and not move out of the way. Yeah, and that's uh, that's Carl's specials and ultras for you. Mm, let's briefly go over normals. And how they fit into his game plan because normals are so important for Carl. Because why they're so important is uh, I want to emphasize is because four specials are come from Nirvana, and Nirvana is starting on your space on your side of the board, and she can't really she can't really do much, right? Like she doesn't have enough. If Nirvana is out of position. Carl will have to rely on normals and Cantabelle to defend himself. And the opponent can de definitely just move away from Nirvana if they want to. So Carl has to use normals to basically get himself in a favorable position, get the sandwich going, and then Nirvana can really capitalize. So Carl really needs normals to defend himself and to... He values certain normals higher than other characters. And I'll go over briefly what each normal does for him. The good old block. Block is just a great card to pay, great card to play for gauge generation because you can use it as an opener, opening block just to bait out the opponent from doing something. Because Carl's notice if you notice Carl has all advances in his if Carl strikes in his openings, they're all advances. Like um, Volante is a mandatory advance. Um, what else? Confoco is a mandatory advance, so they could hit. Nirvana. So this block can actually be a good opener just to bait something out and just for free gauge. Carl is pretty gauge hungry. He needs gauge for his exceed so that Nirvana becomes unflippable. He also needs gauge for his ultras as well, which he needs for repositioning. So 
to block. Just an overall amazing card for him. To stop the opponent from obviously, you know, doing big payoff stuff when Carl's in their face. And the boost, uh, parry. Parry can be good. Um, you need sometimes you need a if there's a, a option that really trends Carl's dominance, trend Carl's sandwich, then he can parry it. Uh, a good parry target is actually focus because some opponents would like to read in Carl because um, Carl loves normals. So parrying focus is often worth it when you can, just so that the opponent cannot read you. Focus is an amazing normal for Carl. Because the opponent cannot move you is a very, very big deal. Sometimes the opponents, when next to Carl, when they want to get out of the sandwich, they will try and play Grasp or some equivalent special to pull him out of position and be free of the sandwich. Focus is just saying, no, you can't move me. And he draws a card and you get hit back for four. It's a great normal for him. He needs it to maintain his sandwich when you suspect your opponent is trying to, um, trying to grasp you. And if we're reading, reading on focus, of course, reading is always an amazing boost. But um, reading for Carl can be really great to set up stuff that would normally be very hard to hit, like Konanima. Konanima is so hard to hit, especially when uh, unexceeded. You can play, you can reading maybe focus or sweep or even block, play Konanima, and you're happy. Sweep. Sweep is just a solid card overall for Carl, as a normal or or for the speed boost. Um, opponents will sometimes stick to Carl and be away from the sister because the sister has the tragic specials. So you can use sweep to punish them when they're in your face. Just hit them for six, trade them, force them to burn resources, and then plus two speed is also very welcome to set up unbeatable options that are way above curve with Nirvana specials. Uh, or, you know, 8-speed Cantabal. No one can really beat that, right? Or you can do 7-speed Confoco with a plus 2-speed boost. I think I mentioned that before. 7-speed Confoco, devastating. So sweep, great normal for him. Spike. Spike's an interesting one. Um, because the Spike has an attack, it's clearly a high payoff for to beat focus, block, etc. Um... Savvy opponents, when they want to play around Cantabile, they may play Focus to stop Carl from pulling. Carl's also a bunch of other push and pull effects. You can use Spike to punish them, to absolutely crush their Focus. Um, you can also use Spike because you can trend from two different ranges. Your opponent is here next to Nirvana, they fear Combrio or Confoco, they block, you can Spike them if you're two or three range away. That's the beauty of a puppet character, is to trend from two different ranges. Spike is a great uh, blow the opponent up mix-up card. Um, very necessary for his kid, I think, to stop focus especially. Um, armor guard, great. Um, armor guard can be good to help uh, help Confoco actually, because the opponent cannot grasp or cross and hit and do enough uh, damage to stun Carl. So that boost is good for Confoco. It's good for Kananima as well. Gives you enough guard to successfully smash the opponent into Nirvana. Yeah, so great attack, great boost for Carl. Dive. Dive is um, dive is weird. Dive can be risky, but it's also if you set up a proper dive. Obviously, the the main use of dive for Carl is he can just go zoop, pass the opponent, dodge attacks, and immediately have a sandwich. Of course, the opponent will expect this. And we'll try to respect dive, but then you can mix it up with Cantabile, Spike, even Sweep. Range tree for Carl, I don't think I mentioned is very good. Because range tree he can hit Cantabile from above curve. Hit with spike, hit with sweep, hit with dive, sub sandwich. Range tree is actually really good for Carl. So yeah, dive is part of his mix up that he wants to use to get free positioning. And of course, tech, you know, the opponent tries to boost to beat Nirvana's stuff in Sandwich, just tech it. Assault. Assault is uh, assault's pretty good for him as well. Mm. Again, it's free movement for Carl and a gap closer. It's often worth it to close to, gain advantage. 
you want to try to play sweeper focus, you can often, you know, it's, it can be worth it just to get advantage. And then on your turn, just move over the opponents. Um, it's a good card. Assault is just generally overall very useful for positioning and for advantage. Um, the retreat is can be welcome too. If your opponent is uh, trapped by Nirvana in the corner, you can retreat and make yourself unhittable and make the opponent have to deal with Nirvana in their face. So the retreat can be good. Cross, again, it's more positioning for Carl, which he needs. Cross, you can use to you can use the boost to advance to the opponent's face when they try to run away, um, or just advance over them to set the sandwich without the risk of playing dive. So the advance is good, and the retreat is good as well, as previously aforementioned. When your opponent is next to Nirvana and trapped, you can play cross, zoop, get out of there, and your opponent's forced to chase you and deal with Nirvana in their face. So yeah, this is the beauty of this is the beauty of puppet characters being in two different positions at once, turning two different attacks, two different ranges. Um, it's great. You can stuff advances when the opponent tries to move with an attack. Yeah. So cross, dive, assault, cross are all very important movement movement normals for Carl. And finally, we have grasp. Grasp. Some people undervalue grasp because it's only three damage. It's fast, but it only does tree damage, and grass is punished heavily by sweep, focus, anything that's slow and counter hitty that trades poorly. But grass, I think Carl values grass as a normal way higher than sub characters because obviously Carl at range one can play grass, zoop, move, pull the opponent one or two, set up the sandwich. It's just another sandwich setter for Carl. Um, yeah, I think Carl values grass more highly than sub characters. And the opponent, if they try to disrespect, if they try to play focus to beat the grass, then you can um, you can do stuff like uh, dive over them, or yeah, you can mix them up. Grass is just something; it's good to threaten your opponents and uh, make them worry about them pulling you over into the sandwich. And the boost plus two power, it's a good, it's a, it's a, it's a good boost. Can be can use for Carl to set up devastating payoff beats if the opponent uh, is too passive. And yeah, I think that's about that about covers everything. Um, we covered his whole kits, how the normals relate to his game plan. And yeah, so basically the takeaway points, Carl is a, is a puppet slash setup character that really needs good positioning to take the most, to make the most of it. Once he gets good positioning, the plus one power, plus one speed, and Nirvana's really powerful specials can really devastate the opponent and just um, outspeed or crush guard or just do everything. Um, but Carl needs to work hard for that positioning because Nirvana's movement is bad. Carl's UA of moving Nirvana 1 is not very good. Nirvana's no low mobility, um, but Carl needs to take advantage of some of his cards to teleport her. Move her with Cantata. Um, yeah, he's a very tra techni technical, tricky character to play. And of course, Carl has in used his normals very well in order to get good positioning and to for mix ups in neutral. You can't always play the obvious special because the opponent will have a counterplay to it, usually. Um, yeah, so Carl is very much. I heard someone describe him as a grappler, and I left the agree because Carl. Call the grappler because he likes to get in the opponent's face and cross over them. He doesn't like standing on the end of the board doing nothing. Um, Carl generally wants to get close to opponents, over them, set a sandwich. Obviously, in some cases, Carl can be a ranger when like um, the opponent's here, Nirvana's here, and then Nirvana can do some nasty stuff, especially when Carl's exceeded. When Carl's exceeded, Nirvana can like advance way more than normal. And just bully the opponents if they don't get close to Carl. So Carl can definitely play a zoner sometimes when he's properly set up. But in most cases, Carl is definitely a guy that likes to get up close to the opponent's face. So you can consider him kind of a grappler in that respect. A puppet grappler, yeah. Oh, and that's my overview of Carl. I think I talked for enough. Um, he's fun. Play him.
Thanks for watching.